it that someone like Nancy Pelosi can enter into office with an annual salary of just $223,000 and end up with a net worth of $114 million? Have you ever wondered where all that profit actually comes from? You may have heard the term new rich. You know, once they were oil rich, then they were Silicon Valley rich, dot com rich. Now it's time to meet the new, new rich the government rich. For the government rich, insider deals, insider trading, and taxpayer money have become the pathway to wealth. They get to walk this exclusive pathway because they get to operate on a completely different set of rules from the rest of us. And they get to do this while working for us all in the name of public service. This video is going to explore the secretive world of insider trading and unveil the truth about the investments of elected officials who don't just simply live for politics, but off politics. And to help uncover the truth, I tracked down someone on the forefront of this issue, Zach Treby of CEO Watchlist. Zach and his business partner, Josh, have been reporting on politician trades for well over a year, something that has netted them large profits, but has also hurt their business. So Zach, how'd you get the idea to track politicians' trades? Josh had the idea of copying what CEOs and senators were trading because he read an article in college about how CEOs and senators had outperforming results to the S&P 500 on a consistent basis. This was big. They came across what might be a gold mine, a way to consistently beat the market, something that even hedge funds failed to do. We kind of wanted to do a proof of concept. Could we get similar results if we just copied these people. And we ended up doing really well. So there you have it. They were already making money and knew there was something big here. And trust me, it turned out to be big. This got me thinking to see how long this has been going on. And it turns out there's a long history of insider trading going on in our capital. And it all starts with George Washington. No, not, not that Washington. George Washington Plunkett. You see, George Washington Plunkett was a party boss of the infamous Tammany Hall, the corrupt political machine that ruled New York for decades. He was born into poverty in a squatter's hut in what's now Central Park. This guy had a wild story. He left school at age 11 and became a multi-millionaire through elective office. And luckily for us, in 1870, he gave a pretty candid interview to newspapers at the time, telling them exactly how he did it. There's a distinction between honest graft and dishonest graft. I've made a big fortune out of the game, and I'm getting richer every day. But I've not gone for the dishonest graft. Blackmailing gamblers, saloon keepers, disorderly people, and neither has any of the men who made big fortunes in politics. There's an honest graft, and I'm an expert of how it works. I might sum up the whole thing by saying, I seen opportunities and I took them. Nowadays, the term honest graph refers to money-making opportunities that might arise while holding public office. These activities are, strictly speaking, legal, although they might raise eyebrows. How do you feel about politicians benefiting from this insider information? People a majority of times are going to look out for their own self-interest, right? Whether you're the average Joe or Jane, or you're a congressperson, you're still a human at the end of the day, and you're still going to want to do what's good for you. Let's use Nancy Pelosi for an example, because she's the big one we've discussed. When she gets this, this law, this bill in front of her, that she knows will hurt these companies that her family owns, is she more likely to be in favor of it or against it? From here, I wanted to learn more about Pelosi. So picture this, the year is 2007, the world economy is hovering on the brink of collapse, a combination of too much bad debt and a burst housing bubble is pushing the American economy over the edge. This is a crisis for the average American. I remember personally, my parents wondering how they're going to pay their bills, but others, looked at this as an opportunity. On the evening of September 18th, 2007, Congressman Spencer Backus was invited to a private briefing held by congressional leaders Hank Paulson and Federal Reserve Chairman Ben Bernanke. They sat around a long table in Nancy Pelosi's office. The meetings were to be kept secret, cell phones to be surrendered. Backus and his colleagues were stunned when they heard the news. The financial crisis could spill into the economy and unemployment would rise if nothing was done. So what did Senator Backus do? 
Well, he bet against the market by buying call options on the ultra short QQQ, a leverage reverse index fund, betting against the economy. A few days later, when the market fell, he netted himself a nice profit, doubling his money. His story is nothing special. He was just one of 10 senators who profited massively off of the financial crisis. In 2009, Pelosi argued that when there was a conflict of interest, then that member should divest, pull out their money. But did Pelosi do so? No, of course not. They bet on their own games. They bet on failure. And who pays the price? The American people. And it doesn't end there. On March 18th, 2008, the Pelosi's made the first of three purchases of Visa stock, totaling between $1 million and $5 million. But this wasn't your ordinary stock purchase. Pelosi had just managed to get her hands on what would be one of the most popular and most lucrative IPOs in American history. The IPO was oversubscribed, meaning no one could get their hands on this unless your name was Nancy Pelosi. What's even more shocking is this was no small bet. This single investment represented at least 10 percent and potentially as much as half of their entire equity holdings at the time. It was an enormous risk, or was it? This study found that U.S. senators may have missed their calling. They should all be running hedge funds. I mean, how else can we explain these results? And just consider this. The average American investor underperforms the market. Well, the average senator beats the market by 12% a year. One study used a statistical estimator to determine that members of Congress were accumulating wealth but 50% faster than expected. Between 2004 and 2006, members saw their net worth soar, on average, an astonishing 84%. But how about recently? Is this still going on? Well, yes. <laughs> Short answer, yes. Congress bought and sold nearly $290 million in equities throughout 2021 alone, as well as $140 million in options contracts. And this isn't a left or right issue. Senate Republicans did some major buying at the beginning of the year, coinciding with the start of Biden's term. August was a big month for House Democrat stock purchases. But why is that? Well, connections. Here's one example. Representative Susan Del Bean disclosed some huge buys on Microsoft. Oh, and get this, her spouse is a top Microsoft executive. And if you look here between September to November, you'll see a huge sell-off. Wanna guess what happened? That same senator's family sold off up to $25 million in Microsoft both in September and October. And November, senators dumped their tech stocks right before the tech market started to crash in December. And what happens when you speak out against these issues? Well, let's ask our friends from CEO Watchlist. We have over a million followers. We're everywhere. We're on news networks, all this stuff. Everything's looking amazing. And then just like that, it's gone. We got hit with the big one, a permanent ban. We went from this massive page of millions of people that we're interacting with on a daily basis to nothing. And we don't even know why. We end up getting in contact with other people on the platform that started doing videos similar to us, right? They started branching out to what senators were doing. And we found out we weren't the only ones. And it wasn't, it wasn't like just one or two of them, all of them, all of them were just disappearing. And they were being given the same reason, illegal activity, something like that. And we're like, illegal activity? Like, wow, what are we doing that's illegal? We're, we're letting people know what, what these people in Congress are doing. Eventually, we were able to get our page back through, through fighting it and stuff. Um, and luckily we got it back. We decided to put a pause on, on posting on there because we didn't want it to happen again. So unfortunately, they have all the power. So it's clear that Congress has an advantage over the market. Just look at the stats. S&P returns for 2021, 13.6%. House member returns, 14.7%. Senate Democrats, 15.4%. The only group that didn't have higher returns was Senate Republicans at a 13% return. Compare this to the fact that over a 15 year period, nearly 90% of actively managed investment funds failed to beat the market. And the worst part, is it seems that we can't even talk about this stuff without risking bans on social media. Now, one strategy is to simply copy the trades. If you can't beat them, join them, right? This at least levels the playing field. Here's what Zach has to say about it. People didn't really understand 
right? You don't just blindly copy these centers and stuff. You also need to know what you're doing because otherwise it's just irresponsible investing. And Zach brought up a really good point here. He said he uses politician buys as a kind of filter. If he sees a senator buy a stock, that doesn't mean he just smashes the buy button. It means he may move that company into a list that he looks further into. This is because you need to make sure that the company makes sense for your investment strategy. And you need to remember that the information can be delayed as much as 45 days. So a stock's price can be dramatically different by the time you get your hands on that information. Now, the good news is that all of this is beginning to get attention. Nancy Pelosi, she was interviewed and she was questioned about all this information coming out on her. And a lot of the articles was stuff we were putting out. It was pretty cool to see that we did make some impact. The members of Congress and their spouses be banned from trading individual stocks while serving in Congress? No, I don't know to this. Because this is a free market and people, we are a free market economy. They should be able to participate in that. We despise athletes who bet on their own games. Why don't we feel the same way about politicians who bet on the outcomes of legislation? Surely the stakes are higher. I mean, even when Martha Stewart was caught insider trading, she faced five months in prison for it. But when a public servant does it, no problem. In 2012, the Stock Act was enacted by President Obama, requiring Congress to report trades within a 45-day window. This was passed thanks to an interview by 60 Minutes. And this got me thinking, if a video published by 60 Minutes led to actual action in Congress, what if a YouTube video could do the same? You can write to your local representatives and tell them what you think, or you can share this video so others can understand what is happening right now in our financial system. If we can collaborate, we might be able to actually make a meaningful change. Now, this video is sponsored by myself. No one else wouldn't touch the topic. <laughs> I have an investment community that you can join linked in the description. There we offer free coaching, full-on research reports, buy alerts, and a whole lot more for as little as $10 a month. It really is an amazing deal that you absolutely need to check out. I would like to thank you so much for watching, and I hope you have a profitable day.